Great, thank you very much. Okay, so what you've seen here demonstrated is there's a whole range of different techniques that are used in magic. <coughs> but what do these all boil, all boil down to? Well, really what we see here is that magic is effectively what we're doing is we're trying to achieve the seemingly impossible in full view of the observer. And we can be a little bit more specific about what makes up a magical event like this. We can say that really it boils down to something unexpected happening, and for that unexpected thing to violate what we understand by cause and effect. And what I mean by cause and effect is that an awful lot of what we understand about how the world works is based on knowing that when certain things happen, other things must necessarily follow. When I throw a ball into the air, it must necessarily come down again. When I place something object in my hand, it's still there until I open that hand again to show you. But what's happening in the world of magic is that we're violating these normal rules. The world isn't working in the way that we expect it to. And when that happens, what we experience as the observer is a sense of disbelief. And it's this sense of disbelief when we watch magic that I want to talk about first. So, Gustav Kuhn and colleagues, they were interested in understanding what's going on in the brain of the observer when they watch these magical events. So to look at what was going on in the brain, they uh, took people put them in one of these scanners, one of these fMRI machines, and then scanned the brain as people were watching magical performances on video. So they showed people a whole range of different performances, and the one I want to illustrate uh, is using the performance that you've just seen of the disappearing hanky. So in the magical version of this event, you see something unexpected, that's the disappearance of the hanky, and you also see something that violates our normal understanding of how the world works, because the hanky is no longer there when it's just been placed in the hand. So this event that they used in the scanner looks like this. Okay. And that's magic. Right. So, but in order to understand how the brain is specifically dealing with the magical part of that video, and not just the general performance that we're watching, what they also did was compare how people watch that to how they watch what should really happen if the world is behaving properly. So now you see the magician place the hanky in his hand. Whoops, let's make this happen. Okay. So now everything's much like it was in the performance that you just saw, but this time the end of it is what you expect to happen. This is what should happen. Okay. So we can take how the brain responds to these two conditions and understand that the difference between those two comes about from observing the magical event. But we're interested really in not just understanding how we watch magic in general, but how the brain responds to these different components of the unexpected and the violation of cause and effect. Now in order to tease those two things apart, we need a third version of this performance in which one of those things happens, but not the other. So what they did for this was they took uh, the same hanky performance, made the hanky disappear in an unexpected way, but not in a way that violates cause and effect. So this is not magic, but it is a way of making a hanky disappear, if you need to. <laughs> okay, certainly kind of unexpected, um, but certainly not impressive magic. Now, by looking at how the brain responds to these three different conditions, what they were able to show is that they found particular parts of the brain that specifically respond to these two um, elements of magic. <coughs> we have parts of the brain shown here that respond specifically to observing violations of cause and effect. And we have specific parts of the brain shown here that respond to observing surprising or unexpected events. Okay. So now we've been able to use the combination of science and magic to understand something about what is going on in the brains of us when we watch people like Harry performing their magic. And we can see that we're beginning to understand the neural circuitry of disbelief from using this kind of work. Okay. But what I've talked about so far is really about a general response to magic. And what I want to do in the rest of tonight's talk is think about two specific kinds of magic and what we can learn from these. And the two particular methods that I want to talk about are misdirection and illusion. Now, misdirection is the technique that magicians use to allow them to do something that should be obvious, but in a way that we don't see it. 
And illusion is slightly different. Illusion is about changing what we believe we see. And we're going to talk about both of these, but we're going to spend more time talking about the misdirection side than the illusion, because this is the thing that I'm working on. <coughs> so, let's start with misdirection. And once again, better than me tell you what misdirection is, let's hand over to Harry, who's going to give you some examples of the use of misdirection in magic. You see cards? You see aces. You shall try to make one card vanish. Watch very closely. Watch my sleeves. <laughs> when I cover the cards, you can't see the cards now. If I take one card away, you know I've taken one card away. Very quickly. Take another card away. You know that the third card has disappeared. <laughs> Do you believe me? You mean you do not believe in this direction? And you do not believe the card has gone? <laughs> <laughs> Hands up if you think I've turned this card over. <laughs> you do? Just a little bit of misdirection for you there. Yeah. You see a glass cabinet, you see this full of balls, yeah? We're going to try and really deceive your eyes this time. You can count there are 12 of the other. different ways to create misdirection. This is misdirection using noise. Kind of everybody shout the magic words, abracadabra as loud as you can. Abracadabra. <laughs> Very good. Did you see the misdirection? Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope you did. Because if you really look at you would actually see there's the walls. <laughs> Are you weren't looking? <laughs> 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 